What's good, YouTube? This your boy Chi World back to y'all again with another art video, man. If you're new to the channel, go ahead, hit that like button, comment, subscribe, make sure you click post notifications so you'll be notified every time you but drop some heat. In today's video, I will be doing a beginner's tutorial on how to make a cartoon here. You know what I'm saying? If this is for the people that got a digital art tablet, though, the next video I drop tutorial i'll make sure i do a beginners for the people who using a mouse but this is for the people who using a digital art tablet so without further ado let's jump right into this video okay first thing you want to do you want to find your picture drag and drop it make sure you make it big as you can so you can have a good look on the lines because you know what I'm saying on most pictures it'll be very pixelated so you need it as big as you can get it so you can kind of clean up and get a good little outline of everything let's select this select the picture drop the opacity down the way you can see it so your your line work can stand out then you want to come over here you want to create your new layer right above it lock the picture layer now we're going to come set our brush, our pressure on our brush. Now, this is what you see me using on every video. You see me coming right here and I just set my pressure on my brush. I do not use a special brush. I just set the pressure on it. So you want to come right here to new brush. You want to hit OK. You want to go to pressure. Change this number to three. Change that number to three. And now you will have a brush you see me use on every single video. All it is is a pressure brush. It's nothing special. If you press hard, it'll, get, it'll be a thick line. But if you press light, it'll be a thin line. So that's the brush I use for all my tutorials and art videos. After you make your brush, let's make out the size of it a little smaller. Uh-oh. Make the size of our brush just a little smaller. Now what we're going to do, we're going to zoom in as close as we can, and we're going to try to improvise on these lines. You see how pixelated it is? I'm improvising, you know what I'm saying? And you're going to have to do that on a lot of people's pictures, because people will send you pictures. That'll look good from a distance, but as soon as you start zooming in, it'll be all kinds of messed up. It'll be pixelated, but that's where your artist mode, you gotta jump in artist mode and you gotta, you gotta kinda fix it. You gotta make it right. So all I'm doing is I'm zooming in as close as I can. Try to clean these lines up, fix them. Bring this over. All right. Make our brush a little smaller. Now we gotta come make the lips. Okay. I always do a close off. You see how I just made this line on the end of the, of the lips? I do that so it'll be easier to close them off and you'll see what I'm talking about. So let's make us a little close off line. Let's bring that bottom a little. Okay. Everything looking nice and clean. Taking my time because it's very pixelated. So just like I said, I got to do a lot of improvising on this picture. Okay. Nice little put this right there. Step back, see how we looking. Okay, everything looking nice and clean. Let's come up here. And most of the time when it when it's a picture like this, I just follow I follow the pixels as best as I can. See what I'm saying? Like you see, follow this part. 
the more you start doing it too, you'll be able to be like, okay, I see. I see where to place my lines at. So that's all I'm doing. Just following the pixels. But I'm improvising at the same time. So this line right there. Go ahead and close the face off. Everything coming together. Go ahead and bring this line on up. Now we gotta do my, my famous drip on the neck. Now what I like to do, you see how I left it? I left the hair and I left the eyes and the eyelashes and the eyebrows, I left all that. Now what I like to do, I like to come to my pencil tool, just right click right here, make sure your pencil tool selected, double click it, your pencil tool, make sure your settings look like mine, hit OK. Move this color black to the top and make sure the bottom one is locked. And now what we finna do, we finna use the pencil tool as a fill tool. So watch this. All you gotta do is trace the area you want it to fill and then close it off. Just come and it's gonna fill in that area. So I do a, I do a lot of my coloring and shading with my pencil tool. I do the line work with the brush and I do my coloring with my pencil tool. So those are the two things that's gonna come in handy. So now we're just gonna follow all this. Step back, see how we're looking, everything. See it's coming, it's coming together. Slowly but surely. Go ahead and do the eyelashes. They're pretty. See? And I'm just following my pixels, but at the same time, I'm improvising. So just, you're gonna have to get used to the picture not looking perfect. You know what I'm saying? Not being a perfect trace for you. So, I'm just improvising. Are we licking everything coming together now? Let's go ahead and fill in this hair. I'm gonna fill this in. See, this pencil tool amazing, and that's why I say you gotta make sure you do a good close off because it's gonna fill in the inner area, you know what I'm saying? So, what I do, I do portions like I do this area, then I make a little close off, let's say right there. Then I'll just keep going up. Let's cover some more ground. Let's make a stopping point right here. And then let's keep going up. The eyebrows. I just like the back. 
back piece. Now let's get back out our brush and make our lines as small as we can get it. We're gonna, we're gonna help it out to make it look like it's fading. So it's all about a technique. As soon as you make up a technique for doing faces, it'll just become very easy to you. Just learn the technique. And a lot of times when your picture is so pixelated where you can't really see the detail of what you're drawing, you can, you can get another reference. Just go to Google, you know what I'm saying? Google images and type in ears, you know what I'm saying? Or whatever you're trying to get a reference picture of to help you out a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Now what I'm gonna do, and a step bike to my pencil tool, move my black to the top, make sure the bottom one is locked, and now I'm gonna add my little 3D effect behind the drip. Cool. Cool is good. We got this thing. Dang, they're completed, man. We got all the line work. A little challenging, but we managed to make it through. Now what we about to do, we got to add some color to this picture, man. Some little minor touches up. Some minor touches. Now we gotta add color to it. So let's go ahead and set it up. Get it all prepped. So we can be able to add some color to this picture. So what you wanna do, you wanna highlight everything. You wanna come up here to object. Expand appearance. And then you wanna hit merge on your pathfinder. What that's gonna do. It's going to make all our lines become one. See, now this picture is just one big old black, one line. You know what I'm saying? Instead of being millions of other lines to make one. You know what I'm saying? I know I just went over your head, but I hope I didn't. Now, we made this one. What you want to do, you want to drag the line work copy to this blank sheet of paper to make a copy. Lock the top copy. Highlight the, the second copy, and let's find us a nice little base tone to start out with. And then we're going to tweak it a little bit, so don't worry about not getting it accurate. So after you find the color you want, I like that tone. You want to come to your rectangle tool, and you want to drag that color over the entire picture. After you do that, you want to right click the color, go to arrange, send to back. So the color can go behind the line work 
you'll know if you did this step right if you look over here to your layers and you, you'll see your line where it's sitting on top of the color okay now what you want to do you want to highlight everything once again and then you want to click merge on your pathfinder so the color can become one with your line work after that you want to right click the color go to isolate selected group and what that's going to do is every area that's closed off is only going to choose that as a group you know what i'm saying like this outer area is only going to choose this since i isolated it from everything else now i can delete it since i don't want that outer color and then we also can switch other colors as well so i want to change this eye color to white i'm gonna select it hold shift and select the other eye and make that white we're gonna select this lips that's why you got to make sure when you're drawing things you got to make sure it's closed off so i'm gonna uh, select these lips and what i'm gonna do is we're gonna add some color to it Let's see what color is her lips. It's pretty much okay. Now the little creases inside her eyes. Hold shift. Make this pink. Another thing too, you know what I don't like? I'm gonna go to my my line work layer at the top. Select the color black. And let's go ahead and help out this little scalp part right here. go back to my color layer what I'm finna do is we're gonna delete these colors out of these hairs right here so I'm gonna, I'm gonna select it with my white tool my white selection tool and hit delete since it ain't tedious all I gotta do is just zoom in Delete that. Delete. Delete. What I want to do, I want to make her skin tone a little more redder. So let's go to our black selection tool right here. Let's highlight. Let's highlight everything. Go to edit. Edit colors. Adjust color balance. Go to preview. And I like to tweak these knobs a little bit so I get it like I want it. And there you go. Pretty pretty much. I think that'll do fine. But okay. And now, what your boy about to do, I'm about to make a copy of my color layer. You got to follow me right here. Make a copy of the color layer. Put a lock on the bottom color layer. Take the eye off. So we can only focus on the color layer we got in between. Come to your white selection tool. And what we're going to do is we're going to delete only the skin tone out of this layer. And this is important for the shading process. So you want to select only the skin tone and hit delete. Make sure it's only deleting the skin tone. Okay. Now we're going to. We're gonna have to get the colors 
so we don't make a mistake and delete our black lines what i like to do i like to hit this drop down menu and i like to lock only my black lines and keep the top two unlocked close it back now oh, we can delete the colors that's trapped inside the black lines without deleting the black lines. So that'll make your job way more easier other than have to go do it one by one. So let's zoom in, make sure we delete all that skin tone. And I'm finna show you why we do this, why we delete the skin tone and that's it. So after you do that, you wanna lock that layer and turn the eye back on on the color layer that's on the bottom. Now you wanna create a layer in between those two layers right there. And this is gonna be our shadow layer. And the reason I do that, so when I make my shadows, I'm gonna show you. Go to my pencil tool, make sure my color is at the top and the bottom one's locked. So when I make my shadows, it'll just fall behind the lips and the eyes and it'll make your job more easier other than having to try to work around the eyes. You know what I'm saying? You can just draw right through it knowing it's gonna fall right behind it. So that's why I always do that when I'm finna do my shading and my shadows. Now what we gotta do, we gotta find a nice shadow color, a nice shadow tone. So what you wanna do, you wanna sample the skin tone and you wanna kinda find something That'll be a nice shadow. So, go to my pencil tool, zoom in, and this, I do all my shading and my shadows with the pencil tool. So, I just draw my shadows. I draw them out. You see how I'm drawing it? And then I just go back and close it off, and it just. It makes me a nice little shadow. So let's go ahead and draw out all our little shadows. And it takes some practice to get good at doing shadows, you know what I'm saying? But the more you do it, the better and the easier it'll, it'll become. All I do is I look at my original picture and I just follow where I see the shadows on the picture. You know what I'm saying? So I noticed on this picture, she don't got, it's, it don't have much value as far as too many shadows to focus on. So I don't, I, I don't have to overdo it. Sometimes you can overdo it when you're doing like female characters and it'll kind of make their face look older than what they actually are so you don't want that you just you just want to do just enough to make it look 3d I'll give it a nice little nice little depth of feel Now what I'm finna do, let's tweak. We finna tweak our shadows just a little bit. I think they can be, I think they can be a little darker. Just a little darker. So. Go ahead and make our 
our shadows just a little more darker, man. So what I do is I highlight all the shadows I made. Go to Object, Expand, click Merge. So all my lines can become one on the shadow layer. Then I go back to Edit. Edit Colors, Adjust Color Balance. Go to Preview. And I tweak it till I get it like a nice little tone I like. I think, I think that's pretty, I think that's pretty dope right there. So learning how to tweak colors and adjust them just right to your liking, it take a little practice, but trust me, you put some time into it you become a beast at it. Like I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm a monster, but I'm working for it, you know what I'm saying? Now we finna create us another layer right under our dark shadows that we just made. And what I like to do, I like to start with my dark shadows and I like to get lighter. Every layer I make, I get lighter with my tones. You know what I'm saying? So now, what we are gonna do, we are gonna sample, and I think this we only gonna do two shadows we're gonna do this dark shadow layer, a light shadow layer, and we're gonna do the highlights, but I don't count that as the shadow layer. So we're just gonna do two shadow layers and a highlight. So now, let's sample the skin tone. Let's find a color that's, that's a nice in between. And just like I said, if you don't get it perfect, we are always gonna tweak it, you know what I'm saying? Cause we gotta make the colors we gotta make it flow with each other. So now I'm finna looking close at my, my picture. And I'm creating these light, lighter tones. So now I'm all you gotta do just focus, focus as much as you can on your subject. You know what I'm saying? Just look closely at, at the picture you're drawing and just focus. That's all I do. I just, whenever I'm drawing, I just focus on my reference. Okay, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make this dark right there. I'm gonna make Make this dark. And we're gonna tweak that color because it don't it don't it's not flowing good. Right now I'm just placing placing my shadows where they need to go. And anytime you place a shadow down and you don't like it, man, just erase it. And just like I said, improvise. Cause a lot of times I do what I think will look good as well. Like when my picture is not helping me out as much, I improvise as an artist. I'm like, okay, what'll we'll make this look better? And that's what we do, we improvise. Now just like I told y'all what we finna do, we finna tweak that layer. So what I like to do just like the layer before, highlight everything on that layer, go to object, expand, then click merge. So those lines we just created can become one. Go to edit, edit colors, adjust color balance, preview, and let's tweak it so it can it can flow better. Now what I'm 
finna do. Let's go back to our dark shadow layer. And we wanna, I'm gonna put a little more color. It's all about making these colors flow together, man. So once you master that, I need to add just a little more, a little more tint. Okay, see how that look? I think that's a little too much of the wrong color. I can sit here all day and tweak this. Okay, let me see. Maybe that's it. Okay, I think that's it. Yeah. Pretty much it, you guys. Now, just like I told you, the last but not least on the skin is the highlight layer. So what I do, I sample the skin tone and I just make like a bright color so we can add all the little highlights. I want to make another dark shadow layer. So I'm going to bring this layer, I'm going to create a new layer, bring it above my dark shadow layer that I already have. And I just want to make just a little, just a little darker, man, for the transitions. Make sure I'm saving this because you can't trust these programs all the time. So make sure you say you work. Remind yourself to stop and save every once in a while because I don't lost so much work trusting these programs. Okay, now what we're gonna do, you already know. I'm gonna highlight them. Shadows we just made, go to object, expand appearance, click merge, go to edit, edit colors, adjust color balance, preview, and let's just give it a little tone, and I think there it go, right there, that's it, that's it, now what we about to do, create a layer right above the top line work you know what i'm saying because now what we want to do we want to add some values and some shades inside of the eyes remember how we set the eyes and the lips on top of everything else now we got to go on top of that so we can color inside the eyes and stuff so make sure you create you a line work i mean create you a new create you a new layer right above the top line work i mean right under the top line work. Now what we about to do? About to come add some some value inside those things. So let's go ahead. I'm telling y'all the more 
more you practice, the better your cartoons will look. You ain't gonna, you might not start out looking like what I'm doing. Your work might not start out like this, but if you stick with it, trust me, because I didn't start out this good doing digital. I always was a great artist on paper, but then when I started doing digital art, it was like learning how to ride a bicycle, like, you know what I'm saying, for the first time. Like when you, when you ain't used to a certain style of art, you gotta relearn it, you know what I'm saying? So you, you might not start out perfect at first doing digital art, but if you stick with it and you put the time into it, you can master it, man. So practice makes close to perfect because can't nobody ever get perfect. And then if you can never get perfect, that means you can always improve. You know what I'm saying? So that's how I feel about it. Your goal, the goal of being an artist is to always improve on your skills and just love the process. So just make sure you practice, man, and over time you'll be, it'll become easy to, to you like it is to me. You feel me? So, I'm gonna add a little, I'm just add a little highlight on this same layer. I ain't even gotta, let's go ahead and sample that. Make it brighter. Okay. Cool. Now, what I need to do, we're gonna create a layer right above everything now. Cause what I wanna do is I wanna put a glare inside her eyes and I wanna do a nice little hair effect. So let's create us a new layer, put it above everything. Let's go ahead. Start with these eyes. Okay. Now you wanna go back to your brush tool and we finna create the hair texture. So what I do is I go to my swatches and then I find this little gradient color. Then I, I select it, pull out my gradient chart, make sure I got three gradient knobs and I make both of the edges black, but I also make it fade into like a a uh, grayish, bluish, whatever. You know what I'm saying? I just make it fade, but I don't make it fade straight to, to black. You know what I'm saying? I kind of give it a little color tint. And I can't explain it good, so you can just, I'm glad y'all can see what I'm doing. So my actions can explain. Look. When I do, I'll see how I make it fade. And then the color in the center, what you wanna do, you wanna make that. Make this a little brighter. And now, now we just created our hairbrush. That's the hairbrush right there. So I go back to my brush, and now we finna draw these hairs. See what I'm saying? And the reason you make both of the edges black so it'll fade into the natural black you already got on your, your line work. Yeah, I know I'm a genius. You feel me? Look, all you gotta do is just draw a nice little line to get that texture going. Make it look real, you feel me? You don't wanna overdo it, but you don't wanna not overdo it. So you want a nice in between of doing the most. Okay. And we'll come on this side here. Just 
make it make the highlights and we're gonna come right here we're gonna do the same thing just make it flow see how we got it going in the same direction and some on some of the lines just start looking thawed off I delete them and you notice these lines right here are messed up. So what you want to do, you want to highlight the lines that's messed up, click it right here, go back to your gradient chart, and you want to change this number until it get right. Until you get your get your your, uh, your highlights in the center. Okay, there we go. Now we back. And there you have it, you guys, how to make a cartoon head for beginners, even though it look advanced. But the more you do it, the more your cartoon heads will look advanced as well. Got more videos coming, more tutorials, more me just flat out just being an artist videos where, you know what I'm saying, you can see my skill level. Make sure you stay tuned for that. More heat coming soon, and I'm out.